the dawn of the 2000s, a movie came out about a young orphan boy who, on his 11th birthday, is taken away to a secret world full of magic and mystery. He also learns that a great evil lurks both in this world and in his past. So today, let's dive into the story of Harry Potter and the fight between good and evil. Firstly, we'll take a brief look into the famous piece of music, Hedwig's theme. Here is a piano. A piano has 12 notes. The distance between any two of these notes is called an interval. And some of those intervals are called perfect intervals, which are intervals that sound perfectly harmonious like the notes blend together. During the Middle Ages, when music was mostly commissioned for the church, these perfect intervals were given great preference. Actually, they would only use these perfect intervals in their church music. They're perfect for prayer and worship because of how harmonious they sound, and it gives the music a special, pleasant tone. On the other side of the spectrum, we have dissonant intervals. Dissonant intervals were actually banned from the church music and nicknamed the tritone or the devil's interval. Here is a perfect interval. Here is a dissonant interval. Something's just not quite right with that second one, right? Dissonant sounds off-key and unharmonious. Horror movie composers are very fond of these intervals for this very reason. They can make music sound unpredictable and scary. And what is interesting is that Hedwig's theme uses both of these kinds of intervals together to create this mysterious sounding music. By combining them, you feel both at ease and on edge. There are moments of beautiful harmony that culminate in mysterious dissonance, leaving us guessing whether we are safe or not. And in that sense, Hedwig's theme reflects the dichotomy of the Harry Potter universe. After Voldemort kills Harry's parents, Voldemort is greatly weakened and goes underground. Harry begins at Hogwarts, he saves the Philosopher's Stone, he destroys Tom Riddle's diary, he exposes one of Voldemort's henchmen, who has been hiding as Ron Weasley's pet rat Scabbers. Voldemort makes several attempts to regain power, but doesn't succeed, until the fourth movie, when he kills Cedric Diggory in the last trial of the dangerous Tri-Wizard Tournament. From there on, things take a much darker turn. Dumbledore dies, Voldemort gets a hold of the Elder Wand, the most powerful wand of all time. Harry goes on the run, the Wizarding World is in shambles, Snape is headmaster. Harry and his friends fight back with some small victories, but Voldemort is always lurking in the darkness waiting for that moment when he can finally get his hands on Harry and kill him. But of course, Voldemort can't kill Harry, and Harry can't kill Voldemort. It's much more complicated than that. Voldemort's only fear is death, and so he spends a lot of time figuring out a way to stay alive forever. The way Voldemort succeeds in doing so is using Horcrux magic dark magic where you split your soul and store it in physical objects. You'll live as long as those objects are whole, but the price is murder. The unforgivable sin. Another way you can do this is to become the master of death, which is to be in possession of the three Deathly Hallows, which are three objects 
created by death himself. The resurrection stone to bring people back from the dead. The cloak of invisibility to hide from them. And the elder wand, the most powerful wand of all time. When one is in possession of the Deathly Hallows, the wizard is invincible. Not even death can touch him. Harry becomes the master of death unknowingly. When he is gifted the Cloak of Invisibility, inherits the Resurrection Stone, and wins the Elder Wand. So by the end of the HP series, they're equal, or so it seems. This is Harry's prophecy. Harry's mother sacrificed herself, deflecting Voldemort's killing curse, turning Harry into a Horcrux, turning Harry into a part of Voldemort, and Voldemort into a part of Harry. A part of Voldemort lives inside of Harry. Voldemort spends the entirety of the HP series obsessed with killing Harry, who is also part of the reason that Voldemort even lives. And Harry spends the entirety of the HP series figuring out a way to kill Voldemort, only to find out that he must let Voldemort kill him. So we have harmony and chaos, the devil's interval and the perfect interval, Harry and Voldemort, good and evil. The story of Harry Potter begs the question, who wins the battle between good and evil when they complete each other? I'm not sure that there is a definite answer. Voldemort loses once he decides to live, and Harry wins once he decides to die. 